Welcome to Comfort Habit Number Two. This is part two of convenience and adaptation of standard and non-standard weapons. So we talked about paper as a weapon. We talked about a spoon. We talked about knives. We talked about everything that you touch should be classified as your weapon. All right. And the reason why I say that is because not everybody has a knife or a gun. Not everybody walks around town brandishing their knife with their gun. And then there are some who do. All right. Now, my personal feelings about knives and guns and shit is that a knife is okay to have, but it's not something that you should ever carry around and threaten people with. But if you have one, you know you know you have one. A gun, something that I think mostly is beneficial to police officers and military men, or my old saying, generally only cops and cowards carry guns, real men fight with these motherfuckers right here, these, 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 and these, yeah, got a little dirt on my pants there, but yeah, but most people don't know how to fight no more, most people don't want to know how to fight no more, most people are so scared to take that L, that, you know, uh, I ain't gonna fight you, I'm gonna shoot you. I'm a badass because I got a gun and I can shoot you. I had a conversation on the way home. I'm getting my papers today. And as me and this young man pointed out, you got to get to that goddamn gun or that knife to use it. And a weapon that you can't use ain't a weapon at all. Or it won't benefit you if you pull your gun and I take that bitch from you. And that can be done with even this. If I use this and you block, snatch, and take it, or you block and turn that some bitch into my stomach, if this was the real shit, not this practice bitch, but if I go here and you grab and you twist and you block and you cut me with my own shit, did I deserve that? The short answer is yes, because I shouldn't have bought that shit to the fight not knowing who I'm fighting, which is a gamble. When you are fighting someone, you don't know who you're fighting until the first swing is swung. You don't know what that person is capable of unless you know how to read people. And a lot of us don't know how to read people. Let's face that shit. Um, I generally don't have a bad problem reading people by their step. And usually if I'm closer to right than wrong, I can tell how high you can kick. I can't always tell what kind of kick you're going to throw, but I can tell how high you can kick. The advantage of being short is... You're not going to try to throw a high kick to a short person. You're going to have to kick at my level. I'm short. I'm 5'3 and a half. So if you try to kick a 5'3 and a half foot guy, it's going to be mid-range for you. Especially if you're over. If you're over 5'6", you know, you're going to have to throw a mid-range kick. So that's anywhere right here. Which would be my head level to my shoulder level. Which is mid-range for you because you're tall. It's high range for me because it's my head. Now, here's my options. You're over six feet. You're throwing a fucking mid-range kick for you, which is a high-range kick for me. I'm going to break your knee. I'm going to catch this hand behind your calf and this hand at your knee. Pop! I'm going to pop your knee on your pop. And I'm going to sweep your foot. And when you go down, I'm going down with you. Because I'm going to put my elbow into your crotch. And then I'm going to hit you in your sternum or your throat. And I'm going to end this fucking fight. As fast as I can. I'm an old man. I can't be playing with you. Now, that's the scenario that I have in my head. The chances of that happening is 30%. And you know you're thinking, why is it 30%? I'm going to say, well, um, this is why I learned Taekwondo. Because that break that I described is specifically to fight someone who does Taekwondo. But what if you're not doing Taekwondo? What if you're doing Kenpo? What if you're doing Aikido? What if you're doing just regular ass karate? I gotta switch up my game. And the thing of why I tell people all the time to be well rounded in every martial art that you can possibly learn, even the ones that people are laughing at, which is uh, Krav Maga and Sistema or Shishima, Shishimi, Oreo, whatever the hell this shit's called. I don't know it. But anyway, I never heard of those martial arts before this year or so. And just like I didn't know the Philippines had a martial art, most of my martial arts are grounded in places like China, Japan, Korea, and Brazil, and America. Other than that, you know, um, the smaller countries like the Philippines and wherever the hell Krav Maga came from and wherever the hell Shishima, 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 motherfucking Oreo, wherever that came from, 
I've never heard of them. I've never taken them. But does that make them useless? No. But you know, knowing Aikido and two forms of Kenpo, one being Korean, one being Japanese, knowing two forms of Taekwondo, because Naharate is technically Taekwondo, which is just like a Japanese version, according to Master Ennis before he passed away. And then knowing other various martial arts doesn't hurt to have them in your repertoire. Knowing a little capoeira, most of my martial arts, I would say I probably know more Chinese martial arts than anything else. But that's all because of adaptation and learning what can work during a fight and what can't work. So, you know, you got got to figure that shit out. Because nine times out of ten, a punch is a punch. Whether it's a jab, an uppercut, or a hook, or a long-range cross, you know, it's still a punch. Same thing with knees, elbows, and kicks. They're all the same. They just have different names. You need to recognize the style. So if I'm coming at you with a crane in a snake formation, see, crane, snake open, crane close. See the head shapes differently. Snake, crane. All right. Tiger, dragon, mantis. Now, if I'm coming at you with any one of those and you don't have a counter for them, I win the fight. If I don't recognize them when you're coming at me with them, you win the fight. I understand how that works. You coming at me, you dragon. That wasn't dragon. That was a trick question. This is dragon. I just showed you that. So if you're coming at dragon. Dragon starts from the chi. The chi starts in the center. So this is why once you find your center, everyone in every school is always said, you must find your center. Find your center. And you're like, what the fuck is that? Well, your chi comes from your center, all right? So, if you don't believe in chi, it's fine. But your chi comes from your center. Dragon is the creature of wisdom, so the dragon fights to protect his center. Center up, center down, you know, switch around, boom, boom, you'll get the picture. Tiger fights here. Tiger doesn't give a damn about the chi. Tiger, you know, dragon, wisdom versus ambition. Mantis is slick. Snake is slick. Crane is defend. So, recognizing the styles, you should be able to go hands up with anybody who knows those styles. It doesn't hurt to know some of the styles. And if you get grounded in one style or another, you're going to go into muscle memory or second nature. You're going to go into something that may very well get your ass kicked. So you have to be well-rounded in everything. You don't have to know everything, but having a little bit of this and a little bit of that will never lead you wrong. Versus, well, I only know Crane. You know, okay. Well, I know Crane. And I know more than Crane. So, if you're whooping my ass with Crane, I gotta switch my game. So, you're whooping me with Crane, and I jump into Tiger. <coughs> so, you don't know Tiger. You just know Crane. Now, I got you. Let's say you know Crane and Tiger, but you don't know Dragon. So, now I know Dragon. Let's say you know Crane, Tiger, and Dragon, but you don't know Drunken Master, and you've been whooping my ass. So all of a sudden, I am a drunken Tiger. I am a drunken Dragon. I am a drunken Mantis. The key to Drunken Master is your sway. So when I tell you, understand what combat can be combative. Alright? With Capoeira, you Jenga. The only Chinese martial art that I can equivalently say that can probably go hands up with someone who does capoeira is Drunken Master. And the reason is because of your sway. Your sway doesn't work the way the jinga works. But the jinga and the sway are both meant to throw you off your game. Alright? Because most martial artists, when you are learning a normal martial art, you're in this fighting stance right here. Every fucking one. Karate, Kenpo, Judo, Taekwondo... You're in a standard fighting stance. When you're doing an animal style, you break into an animal style, but you start in a standard fighting stance. Going crane, going mantis, going tiger, going dragon, going snake. You know, you, you start in a standard fighting stance. Now, those stances vary, because if you're doing Wing Chun, you're in a southpaw stance. Yeah, because 9 times 10, Wing Chun is direct, so... <laughs> You know, block strike, you know, 
and this is the block just in case I miss. No, so boom. No, and I can block here. No, if I'm doing a keto, I'm gonna be back in this stance right here. No, so if you think about it, if most fighting styles start in a standard fighting stance, you can really fuck somebody game up when they get in a standard stance and you start doing the jenga. And you're like, what the fuck is this dude doing? Yeah, it happens. No. So if you don't know what the fuck the Jenga is and they bust your ass up with some capoeira gymnastic kicks and shit, well, you probably should have been more aware of this video and learning that you need to be more rounded in a lot of your martial arts shit. You need to be able to adapt. You need to be able to recognize. You need to be able to figure out what works. Now, if anybody ever tells you that capoeira is not going to work in combat, that's not a thousand percent true. I'm just going to tell you, if you can spire with somebody with it, you could probably use it in a fight. I told you guys a few years back, um, I spied with a guy who was capable It was the same guy that back in high school who had a black belt who went for a shoulder throw. And when he shoulder threw me, I landed on my feet, which fucked him up because he'd never seen anybody survive a shoulder throw. And when I say survive a shoulder throw, I mean land on your feet. And then I commenced to spring off the wall Captain America style, which he's like, they didn't teach me that. I was like, that's not something I learned in school. That's something I learned from the streets because I was a street fighter first. And when you can't fucking outrun something, you use it. So, you know, I couldn't beat him conventionally, so I had to go unorthodox on this shit. You know, he never seen anybody run off the wall and throw a kick. He never seen anybody run off the wall and throw a punch. Because in a dojo... How many times you do that all damn day? Up, oh, gotta do 20 push ups. Up, oh, gotta do some jumping jacks. Up, oh, back to your horse dance. Hammer fist, hammer fist, hammer fist, hammer fist left, hammer fist right, hammer fist, hammer fist, hammer fist. All right, how are you taught to block a hammer fist? You know, those are the ways I was taught to block a hammer fist. I could be wrong, but. I've never been in a fight where someone literally tried to use a hammer fist. Now, axe kick, yes. Hammer fist, no. Because it's like, it's useful if you actually can find a way to use it. There's nothing that's truly not useful. The trick is, I gotta get through your defenses and I have to find exactly where, when, and how to use a move. And when you're in a fight, it's not like you see on TV. It's like this. It's not... Now, I will say, in some cases, when you're exceptionally scared, everything will appear to come at you slowly. Time will seem to speed up or slow down. Now, I can speak from experience on that because in a lot of fights I've had as a kid, I could actually see them coming at me super slow. Now, from the outside looking in, I've had people say, damn, James, that was pretty fast. And I was like, I don't think so. It was like, yeah, that was pretty fast. And, you know, a couple of fights I've had people tell me that I've done shit that I don't remember doing in the fight. So, therefore, you know, you can't remember everything that you do in a fight because at the time, adrenaline's pumping, fear, anxiety, anger, worry, what's going to happen if I lose. You know, all that shit's like coming through your head at the same time. So, again, as I close this out, learn how to adapt. Everything that you touch is your weapon. So for this strike, it would be from this side, by the way. So here, here, pull down, which would look like this. Boom, boom, pull to the knee. Understand? So here, here, and you're pulling down. Your person attacking you would have struck you. So you're here in the gut. You're going to flap that down, and they're going to pull you down. So boom, boom, boom. And then... Kung Fu, use a knee, or Karate, use a knee. Kung Fu, the knee's already there. Karate, the knee, is where you pull in the power to do the most effective damage. However, if I'm pulling you down, and I know that knee's coming, I'm going to block the knee. Which is why you still have this thing around me, and you can pull me back up. So, learn how to use things, man. Everything that you touch as a martial artist becomes a part of your skill set. And if everything you touch as a martial artist can't become part of your skill set, day one do over. Thanks for watching. It's Comfort Havoc number two. Be seeing you.